Hey everybody, Blitzball Champ is back with a brand new video here on the U to the Tube. So, I just finished watching uh, WWE NXT's Halloween Havoc, and uh, I just wanted to take some time to, to chat about it, you know, to kind of give my thoughts on uh, the recent show that just went down, and uh, yeah, wanted to give some feedback, so... Let's go right on into it. So, um, of course, Shotzi Blackheart was the host of Halloween Havoc, which was very fitting considering Shotzi Blackheart is a huge, huge horror fan. So this is pretty much right down her alley. But anyway, <clears throat> we started off with our first match, which was the North American Championship, where Damian Priest defends against... Johnny Gargano, which this was one of two uh, spin the wheel, make a deal matches. Um, and of course, uh, Damian Priest had a special entrance uh, where he had a, I'm not sure who the live guitarist was, but um, pretty much played his entrance theme. And yeah, thought that was really cool. And then uh, Johnny Gargano comes in and, and cuts up and deflates the big pumpkin, pier big pumpkin, inflatable pumpkin that was in front of the entrance ramp. But, um, so yeah, this was one of, one of two spin the wheel, make a deal matches. So Shotzi spun the wheel and this match ended up being a devil's play playground match. Which is pretty much um, no disqualification, falls count anywhere, um, anything goes type of match. So um, it was pretty back and forth match, very very hard hitting. Um, the match went, you know, a good bit all over the arena, but ultimately um, Johnny Gargano had an assist. From a dude dressed up as the the scream uh villain and uh hit Damian priest with a gave him a tombstone uh pillar a tombstone concrete pillar and uh hit Johnny Gargano with it and sent him or excuse me Damian priest with it and sent him flying uh then of course Johnny Gargano went down, got the pinfall, and it's become the first ever two-time NXT North American champion. Um, I was kind of surprised a little bit about this outcome, mainly because, um, and I'll go into discussion about, about this later, but I was really thinking that Gargano was going to lose, mainly because Damian Priest hasn't had the title that long, so I figured he was going to have it a little longer. But I initially predicted either Candice or Johnny Gargano was going to walk away with the title. I didn't think anybody... I didn't think none of them would walk away empty-handed. So, at the end of the day, I get why they pulled the trigger on this. So, I can deal with it. Other other than that, pretty entertaining match. It was back and forth, and I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, next up, we had a segment where um, Pat McAfee came to the ring with uh, new NXT Tag Team Champions Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. And Pat, Pat McAfee kind of explained, you know, some things that went down. Uh, one, one of the things being uh, him paying off Ridge Holland to attack and take out Adam Cole. Um, it was unfortunate in the process that Ridge Holland got hurt. But, yeah. He was paid off to uh, take out Adam Cole. And, of course, everything leading up to the setup 
to assist in helping Oni Larkin and, and Danny Birch win the NXT Tag Team Titles. And then, as that was going down, out comes Kyle O'Reilly and pretty much made his way to the ring. And then Pete Dunne's music, the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne, his music hit. And he had two chairs, brought two chairs down, stood side by side with Kyle O'Reilly, gave Kyle a chair. They both got into the ring, of course, uh, Pat McAfee and the tag champs got to the outside. And as soon as Kyle O'Reilly stepped forward and dropped the chair, bam, the good old switcheroo. And Pete Dunn hits Kyle O'Reilly with the chair. And then they all gang up and beat down and just destroy Kyle O'Reilly. So Pete Dunn turns heel. And joins with Pat McAfee and that and that group. So that was that was pretty cool. So at least it looks like, hey, we we got four on four, right? We got Pat McAfee's group, and you have the Undisputed Era. I mean, hey, that's four on four. They can feud for a while. You know what I mean? So I definitely dig this. I do. And you know. Oni Larkin and Danny Birch have history with uh, Pete Dunne anyway, so this kind of makes sense to pair these three together. So I definitely dig it. You know, it gives, you know, more heel heat for Pat McAfee and Pete Dunne's back to being a heel, which has been a while. It's actually been a good while since Pete Dunne has been a heel. So this was good. This was definitely good. I can dig it. So, yeah. Good stuff. Um, we had a non-title match. Non non-title match between Santos Escobar and Jake Atlas, which I mean it wasn't too long of a match. Jake Atlas was outnumbered anyway, so pretty much it was only a matter of time before Santos Escobar got the got the victory. Um, got an assistance from, of course, Walking Wild and Raul Mendoza. But uh, it was a decent match. Like I said, it wasn't very long, but it was it was a decent match. Um, if anything, I, I do like how they're showcasing Jake Atlas more. You know, it's good to see them get more TV time and and such. So I like I like what they're doing with him. I really do. I like what they're doing with him. Um and then we had the <clears throat> excuse me. We had the haunted house of terror match which took quite a while. They they broke it up into segments where uh Cameron Grimes went up against Dexter Loomis. Of course Cameron Grimes was Scared for his life throughout the entire time. Um, but yeah, had the whole cinematics and had a whole lot of different things from zombies to just like all sorts of craziness. And um, yeah, to Michael P.S. Hayes making an appearance, which I thought was pretty, pretty cool. But um but yeah, uh, Dexter Loomis was pretty much in control for most of the match. But, you know, Cameron Grimes had his, had his share of offense. But, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was an excellent sort of match, but it was entertaining. I'll say it was entertaining, you know, seeing Cameron Grimes, you know, fight through all this and be, you know, a Frady cat. But he did well. Did well. Of course, ultimately... Dexter Loomis won. Um, you know, there was no referee or anything like that. It was just, you know, Dexter Loomis, everything ended up going back to the ring. And um, Dexter Loomis silenced Cameron Grimes. Although Cameron Grimes did get to cave in uh, one of the zombies. So, I, you know, hey, that's that's pretty cool, right? 
But um, but yeah, that was that was pretty neat. Um, had a pretty interesting segment with uh, Killian Dane and Drake Maverick, with Drake Maverick being Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Killian Dane being the <laughs> the shock master. Um, it looks like they're really riding that tag team pretty pretty heavy. I mean. I guess they're really making it a thing. So. <laughs> it is kind of funny, though. I ain't gonna lie. It is kind of funny. Um, Okay, we had Rhea Ripley going up against Raquel Gonzalez. Now, I have to say, this was actually a pretty good match. Um, I felt like it was finally the right time to really showcase a lot of what Raquel Gonzalez can do. And, you know, this rivalry has really been getting heated and heated. And thankfully, it was good to see these two ladies just go at it. You know, there was no interference, no Dakota Kai or anything like that. These two went at it one-on-one. -on -one, and it was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, we finally got the one-on-one the -on -one showdown. And Rhea Ripley capitalized and got the victory. But it was a very good match. It was, a, it was a good match. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if these two ladies will go at it again or if, you know, they decide to take, take Rhea a different direction. But I'm glad this match finally happened and it was one-on-one. -on -one, clean victory, no interference, and these two really got to showcase. So, definitely enjoyed that. Um, and then we have the main event. The main event, the ladies, once again, the main event. So we had the second spin the wheel, make a deal match where Io Shirai defended the NXT Women's title once again against Candice LeRae. Um, <clears throat> Io Shirai had Poppy perform uh, her entrance. So I thought that was really cool to, to see Poppy again. Um, and then they got to the ring, Shotzi once again, sporting a new outfit, spins the wheel, and this ended up being a tables, ladders, and scares match, which is pretty much a TLC match where the winner has to, um, climb up the ladder and, um, take the belt in order to win. Um, I mean, this was a pretty good match. I felt that it was kind of slow at some points, but overall it was still a pretty good match. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, uh, Io Shirai did retain. Um, Candice did have some help to try to get her to scale up the ladder, but Shotzi interferes and uh, had Can uh, Io Shirai's back fought off the, um, which was somebody else that was spawning a, uh, Scream character outfit to assist Candice LeRae, and Shotzi Blackheart was the difference maker and for thwarting that, uh, that interference. Now, I assume that this was a different person. I, I was thinking maybe it was Indy Hartwell in disguise, but... It was definitely a different person, I, I feel. I don't think it was the same person that helped Gargano in the first match. I don't think it was the same person. But I could be wrong. It didn't look like the same person. But uh, ultimately, yeah, that was the difference maker. And uh, once again, Io Shirai, still your NXT Women's Champion. Now, originally, I was kind of surprised. Because originally, I was thinking that Io would lose and Damian would win. So my prediction originally was swapped. Mainly because I felt like because these two got another title shot just like that. I mean, they, they had the first one at uh, the previous TakeOver and then right back again to here at Halloween Havoc. I was thinking one of them was going to win. But I honestly thought it was going to be Candace instead of Johnny Gargano. But 
yeah, that just puts a whole wrench into the system because I originally predicted Candace dethroning Io Shirai for the belt, but after after watching this, I'm thinking either three things are are going to happen that that's going to get built up to. Either one, they're going to build up to uh, Ember Moon versus Io Shirai. I think that's what they might build towards. Um, I was also thinking that they may build towards Tony Storm versus Io Shirai. Because we got to remember, um, Tony Storm has kind of had Io Shirai's number in the past. Remember, she defeated Io Shirai to win the Mae Young Classic 2. Um, which took place at, uh, the finals of that took place at WWE Evolution um, a couple of years ago. So, or three, and I, I would hate for this to happen, is EO retains the title until Charlotte comes back. But Charlotte te technically is on the Raw roster. She She was drafted to Raw, so... That might not be the case anymore. So I think it comes down to they're probably going to build towards EO versus Tony Storm or EO versus Ember Moon. I'm thinking maybe Tony Storm first and EO beats her. And then I don't know, y'all. Maybe EO Shirai loses the title to, to Ember Moon. You know? Whenever that may be, but you you best believe that Tony Storm and Ember Moon will eventually get title shots. I just think that Tony Storm will probably get the first shot, and then maybe Ember Moon later. But that's what I'm thinking. Because honestly, well, it's about to be November. I was originally thinking Io Shirai was going to lose the title before the end of this year, but. You know, with it about to be two months left, I don't know if they have another take. Uh, they probably will have another takeover before the end of this year, I assume. So, maybe this one, EO gets to throne. But, we'll see. But overall, this was a pretty good show. I, I can't really complain. I, I, I can't really complain. This was... This was a pretty good show. Um, Tommaso Ciampa had a segment. Uh, Ember Moon had a little segment. You know, had a little video vignette. So, that was pretty cool. But, uh, ultimately, this was a pretty good show. I, I, can't, I can't complain. But I am curious to really see what, what happens going forward. You know, with folks like Io Shirai and Johnny Gargano... And, um, you know, the tag champs. I do hope that eventually Swerve dethrones Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight title. I really, really do. So, we'll just have to see, see what happens. We'll have to see how Undisputed Era responds, you know, with Kyle O'Reilly being attacked, Pete Dunne joining aside Pat McAfee. We'll have to see how Undisputed Era responds. But they're clearly the faces now. So, should be good. Should be really good. But, anyway, uh, what did y'all think? What did y'all think of Halloween Havoc? Did you enjoy it? What did you think of the matches? Uh, did you like the outcomes? Did you hate the outcomes? Uh, you think Shotzi Blackheart did a good job hosting? I think she did. Um, but, yeah. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, um, click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram, and I hope everybody has a blessed day, and I will see y'all soon. Peace.